Another frequently used scan is a CT scan. CT stands for computerized tomography, a device which takes many X-rays from different angles and uses a computer to create a three-dimensional picture of the inside of the body. The CT scanner consists of a moving couch, not particularly narrow, that slowly moves a person through a hoop that has the shape of a very large donut. The vast majority of people will not experience any sense of claustrophobia. You'll be helped onto the scanner couch by the radiographer. These days, most people go into the scanner feet first. Before the scan starts, a small needle will usually be inserted into your arm for the injection of a contrast medium. This is a liquid that enhances the definition of the scan. You'll go through the scanner twice. The first time is to get a general picture of the whole body, and the second is to obtain the detailed scan. The actual scanning only lasts about 20 seconds, during which time you'll be asked to hold your breath. A more recent innovation is the MRI scan. An MRI scan uses magnetism to build up a three-dimensional image of the inside of the body. Like the CT scanner, the MRI scanner also consists of a moving couch. This slowly moves a person through a cylinder that can be quite narrow, and some people find that this gives them a feeling of claustrophobia. There are a few open MRI scanners available for patients who suffer from claustrophobia, which reduce this tunnel effect. You'll usually go into the scanner feet first. The radiographer will give you a button on the end of a wire, so if you have any concerns, you can immediately alert the staff. You can also talk to the nurses or radiographers while you're in the scanner. As the scan uses magnetism, you'll need to make sure you've removed all metallic objects. You'll also need to tell the radiologist if you have any internal metal objects, such as a pacemaker, or if you have any surgical clips. Before the scan starts, a small needle is inserted into your arm for the injection of the contrast medium. While the scan is taking place, it can be noisy, as the scanner produces a repeated knocking sound. You will be offered headphones through which music will be played. It's okay, you can choose the music you prefer, to help reduce the noise and to relax you. The scan lasts for 30 minutes to an hour. The latest development in scans is the PET scan. PET stands for Positron Emission Tomography. In this scan, you are given an injection of a rapidly acting radioactive substance which disappears from the body in a few hours. The commonest substance that is used is a radioactive form of glucose. A PET scan is not as good as a CT or MRI scan in giving a good three-dimensional picture of the body and is therefore usually used together with a low-dose CT scan to help produce a better picture. Sometimes a PET scan may be combined with a full CT scan. The advantage of a PET scan is that the radioactivity helps to tell what is inside a shadow shown on a CT scan, in particular whether it is cancerous or not. For example, a cancer may have enlarged lymph glands near to it, and it may be uncertain as to whether they are enlarged because of cancer or for another reason. The PET will often help sort out this dilemma. PET scans can also be helpful after treatment for a cancer to sort out whether a remaining lump is active cancer or is just dead or scar tissue. The PET scanner also consists of a moving couch that slowly moves a person through a short tunnel. This is a bit narrower than a CT scan, but much wider than an MRI scan, and most people don't find that it causes claustrophobia. About an hour before the scan starts, a small needle is inserted into your arm for the injection of the radioactive substance. The time is necessary for the radioactive substance to be taken up by the tissues. Unlike the CT and MRI scans, you usually go into the scanner head first. You go into the scanner twice. The first time is to get the CT scan and the second time to get the PET scan. The CT scan takes just a few seconds, but the PET scan takes around an hour. In diagnosing and assessing cancers, ultrasound scans, CT scans, PET scans and MRI scans are often complementary and may give different information. For example, for some cancers, CT scans will give more accurate information, whilst for others an MRI scan is better. 
For others, a PET CT scan gives the best information. So, the choice of which sort of scan is used depends on which type of cancer is suspected or being investigated. Often, a combination of some or occasionally all of these scans may be used in an individual.